Well, new calls for the Democratic Senate uh, candidate in Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, to come clean about her history. This whole controversy started a couple of weeks ago when it surfaced that Elizabeth Warren, who was challenging the Republican Scott Brown in Massachusetts for his U.S. Senate seat, has claimed in the past to be a Native American. While she was teaching at Harvard, while she was at another top university, she listed herself. She claimed she did it because she wanted to meet other people who were like her. This is all based on her claim that her great-great-great-grandma may have been Cherokee, something now genealogists have said they have zero evidence of. And we have heard increasing calls uh, from the Cherokee community after uh, new reports suggest that Warren may not have any Cherokee background at all to have her apologize. Twyla Barnes is a Cherokee genealogist behind the blog Thoughts from Polly's Grandmother. She wrote an open letter to Warren asking for proof of her heritage. Twyla, thank you very much for being here. You know, she maintains that it's been in her family, she's known about it for a long time, and maybe there's no proof of it, but that she is indeed 132nd Cherokee. What say you? No, she's not. I've, I've looked at her documentation. I've looked at her family papers. There's nothing to indicate she's Cherokee. Her family is found nowhere among Cherokee records. What about the great, great, great grandma, Sarah Smith, O.C. Sarah Smith, who first we were told that in a marriage application, uh, marriage license application, she was listed as Cherokee. Now that we're being told, there's really no proof of, of any of that. The application does not say Cherokee anywhere on it. It, it has his name and his mother's name as O.C. Smith. It doesn't even have Sarah on it. It just has O.C. Smith and there's no Cherokee. So far she has not released any proof. She's not released any documentation. Uh, you say in your open letter, quote, we Cherokees have lots and lots of documentation supporting our claims of ancestry. Is that the case? For Cherokees? Yes. Yes. There is from the, the Miller Roll, which was 1907 to 1914, going all the way back to before the Trail of Tears, Cherokees are recorded and we can trace our families. She doesn't provide documentation as proof, but apparently her campaign is pointing some folks to the Pow Wow Chow Cookbook, a Native American, uh, in which she's got a, a, a Native American recipe. Uh, she's listed as, you know, one of the providers or a Native American recipe that, I don't know, she, she called for mayo in it. She's taken some heat for suggesting that a Native American recipe has, has mayo in it. I don't understand how it works, Twyla, quite frankly. But she's, she's pointing to this, apparently. She's also given this soundbite about her appearance and the appearance of others in her family. Take a listen. I still have a picture on my mantle at home. And it's a picture my mother had before that, a picture of my grandfather. Aunt B has walked by that picture at least a thousand times, remarked that he, that her father, my papa, had high cheekbones like all of the Indians do, because that's how she saw it. And she said, and your mother got those same great cheekbones, and I didn't. She thought this was the bad deal she had gotten in life. Being Native American has been part of my story, I guess, since the day I was born. What's your reaction to that, Twyla? Well, when she said it's part of her story, that's true. It's just a story. And honestly, I have never walked by any picture of any of my ancestors that are Indian and said, they have high cheekbones. It's just not something we say. I. I that comment, I'm just shocked that you, she used that. Do you, first of all, I want to correct myself. Apparently the campaign didn't put it out, but uh, she did tout her Native American roots alleged in this 84 cookbook. Uh, do, you, do you view her as a fraud? And why do you think that this is significant? Because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, whatever. She, she was or she wasn't. Who cares? I saw an interview with her, I think, from yesterday. And she said people are not wanting to focus on the real issues. They want to focus on her ancestry. Well, I think this is a real issue because we have issues in Indian country like Indian health services that could be improved, poverty, 
there are conditions sometimes that are worse than third world country living conditions. And those are issues to us, yet she thinks she can pretend to be an Indian and benefit from that, and she has no clue that these issues even exist. So it is important to talk this, because these are the people that she stepped on to get where she is today. She listed herself as a, as, as an, a Native American, which gives her minority status in, in a law school directory when she was at Harvard uh, and another university. And there is an accusation that in doing that, th these universities may have looked at it and may have given her, whether she knew about it or not, favored status in, in their hiring and promotion decisions. Uh, your thought about, you know, Elizabeth Warren having possibly displaced uh, someone who is Native American from those jobs because, you know, if they're looking to hire one and then they hire Elizabeth Warren, they think they think they checked that box when in fact maybe they have not hired a Native American. I think if, that, if that's what she did, then it's apprehensible. I, I wish they would release all the documents used in her hiring so that people can know and have that question answered. Because yeah. she did, we know she checked herself as Native American in the directories. So what's to say she didn't when she applied for the jobs? Yeah, she's denied that, and, and uh, at least one official from Harvard uh, who re remembers hiring her suggested they did not consider that. But we'll continue to follow it. It's interesting. Twyla, thank you. All the best to you.